another Source One podcast. My name is Nicholas Hamner, and I'm the business development manager here at Source One. A partner cast is where we interview one of our strategic partners and gather their in, their insight on an industry trend. With me by phone is Charles Dominic, president and founder of the Next Level Purchasing Association. Mr. Dominic, why don't you get uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, Nick. Uh, my name is Charles Dominic, and I am the president and founder of the Next Level Purchasing Association. We are an organization that provides training and certification to procurement departments and procurement professionals. So for the first question, what are some trends that you see for the strategic sourcing and procurement industry that are having an effect today? What are some that you see on the horizon? The procurement trends in the biggest companies today are what become the trends that are on the horizon for the rest of the world. So, you know, what I'd like to do is just look at what big companies have started to do. And so certainly they're, they're doing a lot of things, but I think that one of the areas getting the most attention today and, and expanding amount of attention is social responsibility in the supply chain. Um, I, again, this is a, has become a very broad field, and it's encompassing more and more seemingly every day, um, where procurement professionals are looking at things from supplier working conditions, factory safety, child labor, and more. And with global sourcing ever expanding and new um, countries uh, where suppliers are found um, uh, becoming stronger and stronger, I think that social responsibility in the supply chain is only a movement will, that will get bigger and bigger. Okay. And on the second question, what's something that you see today that's getting more hype than it deserves? What is a current buzzword that you think will fail to live up to the hype? Well, I'm going to answer that not in terms of unnecessary hype, but rather an area that I think is far from being uh, mature, as some people may think it is. And that area is supplier networks and supplier discovery. You know, it seems like the, the technology vendors in the space are trying to corner the market for their solution by having the biggest and best supplier network. And I think there's actually still a lot of battling left to do for reinventing the way that buyers find suppliers, and there won't be a be-all, end-all supplier network in the near term. So I, I think that's an area where we're going to continue to see um, evolution. And I think what is being hyped up today may not be what, you know, supplier network, supplier discovery, or whatever uh, it may be called will look like in the future. Okay. And on the other side of question two, what is a trend that you feel is flying under the radar right now? What is something that will be generating buzz, you know, 18 months from now? Yeah, uh, I think that procurement uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, vary so much from organization to organization, and in some cases they really don't need to. You know, there are some best practices for putting in place optimized KPIs that are just not getting enough attention, and you know, I, I think that's an area that organizations need to focus on and need to not take so casually. If they need to look outside of their four walls or look outside of what they've traditionally done and, you know, bring bring these best practices from under the radar to on the radar and start adopting them. That's a very interesting response. Do you have an example you can provide? Sure, absolutely. You know, at, at the Next Level Purchasing Association, about two years ago, we created something called the Procurement Funnel. And it's basically a model that looks at a cascading set of procurement key performance indicators that have a compound effect on uh, cost savings. So, uh, you know, I think that there are companies that l can look at these, the or that do look at some of these key performance indicators individually, but when they're used systematically together, the uh, the compound effect on savings is, can be really immense. Um, so that's something that I would like to see more organizations adopt, the procurement funnel and the, and the KPIs that go along with it. Okay, for this final question, I'm going to give you a hypothetical. You are a chief procurement officer at an average company, and you can make one change or recommendation without fear of repercussion. What is that change? 
No, I, I would like to actually address that more broadly. Um, okay. You know, being the founder of a training organization, obviously I'm biased. But bias or none, continually training a procurement staff should be on every CPO's agenda. You know, and I'm not necessarily saying you use um, my organization's training or someone else's organization's training or even training your team yourself or any combination, but, again, continually training a procurement staff should be on every CPO's agenda. The average procurement professional gets about 20 hours of training per year. That's less than 1% of their working hours. So it's not disruptive to the workplace. Um, training doesn't require change management like implementing software does. And it's something that most employees like participating in because they get to walk away with skills that will last them a lifetime. But most importantly, it benefits the employer. It, it, it gives the employee the tools to deliver bigger results for the employer. And, you know, just, just think about this. If, if every procurement employee learned how to create value, and that value was equivalent to 1% of the spend that he or she was responsible for, you know, how much does that add to the bottom line? It's immense, and, you know, that's, that percentage is very possible. And the cost is but a fraction of the value. So you get awesome ROI with training. It's a no-brainer, and there's really no significant downside. Um, you know, how many other initiatives have the combination of such great potential and such little risk? You know, not, not very many. So in my opinion, um, you know, I, I think if you're talking about one organizational change without fear of repercussion, um, and repercussion may, may come from implementing software that, that doesn't get adopted. It may come from uh, restructuring, reorganizing, uh, firing some people, replacing others. Y you just don't have those consequences with training. All right. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Dominic, and we really appreciate your insight. Where can the listeners follow up with you? Sure. Um, anyone can visit our website at www.nextlevelpurchasing.com. Uh, we have a uh, membership option that is free. It's our free basic membership. Uh, if you go to our site, at least do that, and you can get some, uh, some great free educational resources uh, when you do. Once again, that was Charles Dominic, President and Founder of Next Level Purchasing Association. My name is Nicholas Hamner. I am the Business Development Manager here at Source One, and thank you for listening.